So did you know that everything that you do in developer world, that we do, has a lot in common with Disney? So it might shock you that Disney has made its whole theme for 100 years now this year about friends. Mickey has Donald. Minnie has Daisy. If you like Rapunzel, she's got Pascal. Flynn Rider, he's got Max. They always have a friend, and it makes the movies and the themes and the stories richer because they do things together. And like them, with Disney, all of us as developers, all of you, you like pair programming with your friends, don't you? Do we do more and do we do better when we have somebody else helping us out with our code? Don't you remember that late night that you were working on something and you just wouldn't go to bed because you're like, if I sleep, I'll never get this done, right? If I wake up in the morning, like a good night's sleep is like the last thing I need. I need to get this done and call my friend and work on this problem together. How do I write an Angular interceptor? I forgot how to do that. You know, how do I convert this component to using a new version? What is the ng upgrade command that I need? Why isn't my code working? You know, if you don't have a ward bell in your pocket, you've got somebody else. So you need to have a friend, and like that, today's story is all about how you can use a new friend using AI with your developer story. All right. So hello, my frame is John Papa, and uh, I've been a developer for my whole life, and I really enjoy being here. And just like all of you, I'm just a developer. I love writing code. I work for Microsoft, and my pronouns are he and him. You know, since the days of early open source, higher programming languages, there has been a very big fundamental shift in how we actually code. We used to do a lot of things by searching online. Hello, copy, paste from Stack Overflow, right? Go find a solution, and why didn't it work? How dare they post something that didn't work for my answer, right? I mean, come on. You know, if I was pair programming, maybe I'd get that. But despite how far we've come, it's really time for something new. And you may have heard AI has been kind of big over the last year, and a lot of things have been coming out. How many of you here have used GitHub Copilot to any degree? It's pretty awesome. A lot of you out there. You all like it? It's pretty cool, isn't it? Did you know that you're one of almost a million developers using GitHub Copilot now? Right now, GitHub Copilot has already got huge steam behind it, and there's more coming through here. So it's never been harder to build and maintain software. Remember the days you used to drop a script tag on a page and we were done? And now we've got build processes and configuration and debugging, and we've got multiple layers, different frameworks, uh, React, Angular, Svelte. Sometimes you have to use multiple together to get things done, and sometimes you just need a little bit of help to get things, uh, get things moving faster. And ultimately, we want to get over the monotony of things and be happier and more productive. So now, the fundamental shift's turn is AI's time. AI is gonna define or redefine the developer experience for all of us. It is not going to replace or supplant, it is going to be our friend. Just like Mickey has Minnie or Donald, it's gonna be our friend to help us do the pair programming out there. With AI at every step of the way, we're gonna fundamentally redefine how all of you and us do developer productivity and how this happens. And GitHub Copilot's one of the first places that you're gonna see this. So one of the nice things about GitHub Copilot is a, air, is a AI pair programming partner of yours. It helps you. Is it always correct? Is Stack Overflow always correct? Right, are you always correct? <laughs> My pair programming partner is Dan Wally, and so he's always correct. I have an advantage over all of you, by the way. But when you're coding things like regex, do you always get the regex right? I mean, let's be honest, how many times have you used a regex and you're like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I know what that does. <laughs> you know, it couldn't possibly be that because you just do not want to debug that thing. You're like, I don't want to figure that out. So when you're using these pair programming um, friends that you're coding with, you can use a lot of different tools that are out there. Uh, we've done Googling and Binging and we've done our uh, Stack Overflows. We do a lot of different things. YouTube for videos, we do Pluralsight, Udemy, uh, but what about the tools themselves? Wouldn't it be nice if the tool itself could just help us get things done faster? So just about three years ago, GitHub started playing around with large language models, LLMs, and they quickly became very clear that generative AI 
that we could do with these represents the future of web development. We started off very slowly with the Copilot tools and things that we could do. And now in like VS Code or in JetBrains or Visual Studio, you can add the Copilot extension and then take advantage of those right inside your editor. But some of the things started off a little slower and they've really rapidly ascended quite a bit. And as the models and the codecs behind Copilot have changed and shifted. So Copilot's got the potential to really scale a whole new generation of developers. How many of you out there have seen the younger generation, maybe some of you are the younger generation, learning now on phones? Like, anybody have that neck problem? Where you're walking around and look like this? I mean, there's a different way of learning these days. Years ago, we bought books, and then the internet came out, and then we started doing stack overflows, and the way we're learning and consuming data is changing. The way that developers who start now are going to be learning about how to code is all gonna be done through AI. This is where the future is leading towards. And we're at that nexus now of this development crew, all of us, to be able to enjoy that. So the big picture is out there for us. But it's time to get into a demo to kind of see what you can do. Who wants to see a live demo? Yay! How many of you here believe that AI is always working these days too, including the cloud and the internet connections? Let's see. All right, so first, we're gonna to go to the internet, and first of all, I want to show with you and share with you a project that I have up on the internet. It's at this repo, it's called Cloud Coding with Code Spaces. Did you know, first of all, with GitHub, you can literally press the period key, or the dot, on your keyboard, and it will open this up inside of a web version of VS Code.dev. So you can literally just start coding right inside of here with a file editor on the web. What you can also do is then open that up inside of a code space. And I've done that in advance because it takes about 20 seconds here, so you can see it. But here's the same project up inside of a code space. A code space is your development environment in the cloud. What this helps you with is it helps you not have to worry about installing everything on your machine. I could literally run this on my iPad, which is also my backup machine today. So you could actually go into the browser and start working on a Node environment with Angular, React, whatever you want, Python, in the browser. What you can do even further is you can install extensions. So in my extensions, you'll notice, I'm gonna type in GitHub Copilot, and I've got Copilot installed already in my code space right here. It's my AI pair programming partner. Well, what can I do with that? There's a couple things I can do. In my application, I've got a list of products. You can see here I've got carrots and lemons and apples and things like that. Well, I can also add more products down here if I want to using Copilot down there, or maybe my data, I wanna sort the products when they come back. Now, how many of you remember the JavaScript sorting array functions? I saw one hand pop up too, there we go. Uh, this is, you're like, this is what Stack Overflow and Google are for, right? No, this is what Copilot's for. So we can type in things like, all right, sort the, ooh, it's giving me a hint, sort products by name, ascending, now let's keep going there, and return what? The sorted list, yeah, of course, let's go. And let's see what happens, and bam. Noun products have been sorted in order. But what if you don't like the particular sorting technique that it used? What other options do we have? Well, we can hit Control and Enter, and on the right-hand side, Copilot is gonna synthesize some options for us for different sorting techniques. And you can see some of the ones that were there I already saw. You can also do something more expansive, like down here. And whatever one I like, I can click Accept Solution, and it pops it over into my code on the left-hand side. I haven't installed a darn thing. Everything's inside the browser, and I'm using Copilot as my AI to kind of help me. And all this is available to all of you today. But let's get out of the browser. We'll come over to some other projects that we have. So I've got two projects that I'm gonna show you. The first one's called Shop at Home here, and I'll zoom in a couple of times. Here we see that same code that we just saw that was up inside of my code space that we had earlier. Let's try a couple different things that we can do. So let's say inside of my code, I wanted to go ahead and add the sorting technique again. Let's go add sort. By the way, you don't actually have to spell things right, which is kind of cool. Like I can say prod cuts by name. And there you go. It actually figured out, yeah, John's a terrible speller, so I know what he means. I don't know how bad you can get with that, by the way. Like, let's try this again. Let's sort the blah by name. And let's see what it's, there you go. 
So did you ever just not be able to get the words out? You're like, just get the thing with the thing, right? Sort the thing. You gotta love this. All right, so let's say I wanted to add other properties to this. Like I've got my products, but they don't have an out of stock variable to them. So I want to add an out of stock property to each product. And notice I spelled out out of stock. Let's see what happens. Ooh, for each, that sounds fancy. Product out of status for product quantity is zero. So it actually looked at the product object and saw it had a quantity property. I didn't have to go figure this out. And notice there's no error there. So I went and go and click on quantity. Oops, let me get out of there. If I go look at the product, yes, that's where you are. Why aren't you going back over to the products? Product data, there we go. We can see it's got ID, name, description, and quantity on there. And now, we're adding a product out of stock property. So we've got all sorts of stuff that we can do inside of our code space in the browser, but now we're in VS Code using Copilot as well, using the same extension that you can download and use. But what if we want to do something a little fancier? So let's say we wanted to add some models. So I'm inside there, you saw I had products. It's already given me a hint, like what else do you want? It thinks I want a user interface. I really don't, sorry. But I do want to add a model for customer. So let's do that. And I want to say uh, with properties, ID, name, uh, email state and join date, nah, that's close. How about email? And we'll also do phone. And now there's an interface, but I don't want an interface, so sometimes it needs help. So I'll say, let's create a class model. There we go, it's a class. Boom. And now I've got my class. Now, this is cool because Copilot is context aware. It knows I started a customer. So now it's starting to say, what other hints do you want? I'm going to say, create a class model for orders. And it's got some properties on there. Let's go ahead and just take what it gives me. And there's a bunch of products in there. Notice the product is not there. It did see that the product existed, but now it needs some help. So I can do a quick hint here by hitting Command and then period or Control period on Windows. And I can say, add the import from product. If I keep going down, now I can say create a model class for order items. And I'm just gonna see what it comes up with. There's my order item, there you go. And I can even go further with my order items and I can start asking it to create functions. Create a static method to calculate the total price. That sounds amazing. Let's go ahead and do that. Does your pair programming partner do this? This is pretty cool. I mean, it's really nice because it's starting to fill in the things that you are thinking about doing. Did you know you could use Copilot in a README file as well? If you didn't know that, we could come down here in the README and you could add something in here and say, you know what, I need a list of resources. And you can start typing in things like, all right, I wanna create a hyperlink in here for where I wanna to go to, let's say, um, find, uh, let's say the Angular IO documentation. I do need to spell something halfway right here and Copilot is not helping me. So sometimes, just like Stack Overlay and your best friend, it's went out to get a snack. <laughs> so we'll move on to the next one. All right. Um, how many of you here really like RxJS? All right, good, good, good. How many would like somebody like Ben Lesh to sit with them when they're coding RxJS? <laughs> All right. So Ben, if you're here, uh, your consulting rates now just went up. All right, so let's go into a product service here. We've got a list of different functions for get products, get product by ID. What if I want to search my products? Let me scroll up here inside my project, and I want to create a function. And I don't know what I want to do. I already got one to update a product. How about to search products by name? That sounds amazing. Search products with a term. Ooh, it's adding some interesting things like, ooh, if it's, there's no search term, return an array and then it does the actual API call. And notice it's using the context awareness to find the API URL that I've already used in other places here. Now maybe the name isn't the right query string, so you do have to look at the code, <laughs> just like with Stack Overflow before you actually pull it out. Um, but maybe I don't want this to return it this way, so I can delete that, and I can actually see what other options they have. And by hitting tab and enter, now I'm like, yeah, just give me an empty observable of that array, and that works for me. Uh, so that worked out really good. Let's try something different. We'll go to a different project here. And in this project, I want to go to a guard that I have. How many of you here use guards inside of Angular? Yeah. Good amount? Yeah, guards are really cool. I like them. So inside the guard, we can also ask questions like, 
Let's say Dan Wanling taught you how to use a guard. You can ask a question by doing Q. You can say, why is this a function? Or you can say, what is this guard doing, and why does it use generics? And then it will try to answer you. It's a guard that can be used to prevent a user from navigating away from a route. That's pretty cool. You might then say something like, all right, well, what's the difference between a guard and a resolver? Not a resource, resolver. Guards used to prevent a user from going to an out, to a route. Resolvers used to fetch data before the route's activated. So it's actually looking up information for you. You can also start asking questions like, oh, can I apply more than one guard to a route? Uh, yeah, she can apply multiple. Well, that's nice. I asked it a yes, no question. OK, how? Boom. It's context aware. It remembers the conversation. This is all conversational. Just like when you're having a chat with me or you or your friend, it's remembering what your conversation was. Now, obviously, you can delete these things and move along, but it's pretty darn cool. Uh, you can even ask questions like, uh, who here likes Star Wars and Star Trek? All right, which is better? <laughs> Star Wars or Star Trek? Um, and why? Let's go there. Let's go there. I mean, come on, really. Seriously. Can you imagine Darth Vader against Captain Kirk? He'd be like, but Darth, you're done. That's it. Um, you can also do something like uh, rank the best Star Wars movies uh, by title. There we go. I, I, you know, I kind of feel like I agree with this so far. So it's kind of going down that road. Uh, I don't know. Now I'm getting kind of iffy. Rogue One's got to go a lot higher, right? All right, all right. So uh, we could even say here, uh, you're crazy. <laughs> right? Pretty cool. You can even go down this road, right? So what is the best Angular conference? Uh-oh, putting everybody on the spot here. All right? Not bad. So we'll go back to here. Uh, just so you know, to get a little more context on where we are, a lot of people have taken surveys on GitHub on like how they're liking GitHub Copilot and where it's going. And what the research is showing from these surveys is that you get 55% of those people say they're faster at coding with Copilot than without it, that they're more fulfilled. Like, do you like to be happy when you're working? Like, that's kind of nice, right? So it's kind of cool, you're more fulfilled, and the code gets written, 46% more of that gets written when you're using Copilot. You saw how fast I was going with this. The days of lie coding and being worried are kind of gone, uh, as long as it actually answers you and doesn't get a coffee break, right? So it's kind of cool. Um, recently, we announced at Microsoft and GitHub that there's now GitHub for Business. So you can actually sign up for this, and if you're at an organization, your organization can get GitHub for Copi with Copilot. But I'm also here to tell you that very recently at Microsoft Build, we announced GitHub Copilot X. GitHub Copilot X is the next generation of features. So beyond using what I'm showing you here today, which all of you have, there's also, if you go to the web page for this, for GitHub Copilot Next or GitHub Copilot uh, Next itself, you can do chat. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. You can use voice to do Copilot. You can talk to your pair programmer, as long as you're nice, by the way. You can have documentation that gets created with GitHub Copilot. You have pull requests automatically reviewed and generated with commit messages for you with Copilot. Wouldn't that be sweet? And GitHub Copilot has a CLI, and this is constantly being updated. These are in various phases of release, uh, and chat is something I'm really excited to share with you today. So let's go check this one out. All right. So, coming back to here, let's go into the Shop at Home app. That's this one. And we're going to open up this product data. Let's see. There we are. And let's say that I've got three products in my inventory, and I want to do more with this. Well, you know I could come down here and tell Copilot to do it. But now that I've got Copilot chat installed, so I'll show you that real quick, and my extensions, we can see the chat has been installed right there. It says it's installing. That was not happy. All right. And now what I want to do is I'm in this data array here, and I want to open up 
chat, and then go to the view of that. And it's over here on the left-hand side. I get this, how can I help you dialogue? So basically, it's inside of here as an assistant to help me code. So I can type things in like uh, create a product array, uh, or add to, create, I don't know how to use English, sorry. Create a product array with seven more products, or let's just say seven products. And let's see what happens. It's thinking about it, and it's giving me an example of how I can do this. And notice it's context aware. I haven't done anything other than show up my code window, and it sees what I've got. And I'm feeling pretty good about the cheese here. So I'm liking this, and now let's say I like that so much, what I can do is I can come over here, highlight that code, and go to the top of this code window, and right there, I can highlight this little icon, insert a cursor, and boom. All of my code is now over here on the right-hand side. Really, really cool, right? Let's go back to product service. I don't have Ben Lesh with me. So what I'm gonna do is go up into my new URL. Well, actually, it's gonna get products up here. I wanna add a retry when. So what I wanna do is say, you know, I wanna retry, and we'll do this right above it. Let's go retry. We can start typing that here, uh, the HTTP. And we can start typing this out, and it gives us hints, right? But I don't want to do it here. I want to use the chat again. So I'm hitting Command Control I, or it could be um, Windows key Control I in Windows. So we go over here and I can type in my command. So let's go down here again and I'm going to type in retry. We'll highlight the function so it knows what I want. It's this get products. You get this context aware. Retry the HTTP three times with a delay of two seconds in between the requests. Um, and let's see what happens. So here's an example. Okay, that's actually not too bad, but it's not exactly what I want, but it's also explaining to me. It's telling me to use retry when with a pipe and a merge map, but it's using a timer. So it's context aware. I can say, this is great. Thank you. Be nice, remember. Uh, and can you use that and use the delay operator? from RxJS instead of timer, because I'm way too lazy to replace the word timer with delay. So now I go through there, and you can see it's doing it with a slightly different syntax, using a pipe delay in here. It's not exactly what I need sometimes, so I have to kind of tinker with it and figure out how to prompt it. Prompt engineering is going to be one of your friends when you go through here. So remember I also said that regex is not your friend. So if you get code like this and you have regex and you want to know how do I actually work through this, I can open up the chat and I can do things like this. So here's my chat window and I can say explain the regex. And I've learned to tell it to explain it briefly because I don't have time to read six paragraphs. <laughs> oh, okay, the first one's email, the next one's phone, the third one's a strong password. I gotcha. So now, how about if I tell it to make my code more readable and with better constant names. Let's see what it does. So here's an updated version. It changed the names of the constants. I like that. Let's go ahead and copy that, and I'll pull it over here. That's good. But let's not stop here. Now I also want and, and and is key for the prompt, and separate, I can never spell that word right, uh, the validation uh, functions. We'll make one for each of these functions, and let's add comments, because why not? So here's a new version. I still have my constants up top. I've got my first function. Now I have three new functions for validating email, and I've got a couple comments in here. So I can just, again, go up to this page. I can then tell it, please bring the code over. And now I have regex I can actually see and understand. All right. So let's do a couple other things here. Uh, we can also do some cool stuff with, like, my can deactivate guard. And we can use an auth interceptor. So let's bring those up. Like the auth interceptor, maybe in here, I want to have it explain the code to me. I could just put it right here and I can say, can you explain for me? Explain my code. And then it highlights the code and it sees, what is this thing? And it actually gives you information about what you're doing. But I want to kind of skip ahead and show you some really cool stuff. So what we can do is we can take a guard. How many of you here use the class style guards out there? A lot of you? Did you know you can use functional guards now in Angular 16? I really like this. Let's see if it can actually convert this to a function for me. So let's go and let's ask it to convert the, uh, the class uh, to a function. 
And let's see what happens to this. So it actually pulls it all into a function for me, but you notice it's actually injecting the session service. And I don't want it to do that because there is no dependency injection there um, that I'm using. So instead, I want to kind of add on to this to add, let's do and, got to do that there, uh, remove the parameters from the function and instead get them from the inject uh, function inside of this. Now let's see what happens. So now we can see we went back to a class. So what I have to do is I have to tell it, keep the context you have and go back. So sometimes it takes a little massaging to get there. But let's kind of really show what you really want to do. So in my app, I have a React component. You all thought you were coming to Angular conference, right? So I've got a React component. How many of you search the internet for a modal dialogue sometimes? You're like, I just need a modal dialogue in Angular, and you know, I don't have one I like. Well, maybe I can just ask Copilot, convert this component from React to Angular. Let's see what happens. What do you think? Is that pretty darn close to what Angular would do there? It's got the HTML template, it's got everything up there. It's got pretty much what I need to do, except it doesn't have the actual implementation of the on, uh, what is it, on no, on yes. Uh, great, and please implement the on no and on yes functions to emit the events. And let's see what it does. So now, ah, oops, your response got filtered, sorry but it will actually create that for you and it actually converts everything from React and over. You can even do services. Like I've got these services that I can use and I can pull them over as well. The last thing I wanna show you is if you get a response like this, you can click on the X, it'll actually take it out of your conversation so you don't get the conversation muddied. Kind of like when you're telling your buddy, you know, forget that last thing I said. You can also ask it a quick question. Like I can go over to something like, let's go to this preload strategy here and I can ask it a quick question by hitting the light bulb right here or hitting command dot. And now I can do things like document this using Copilot. And it opens up right inside there what that documentation should be. And I can click accept and it tells me exactly what that's doing and it puts a comment right above my code. You ever wondered what that function was doing that your buddy wrote? Well, now you know. You can also open these in the sidebar. You can pull into a full uh, uh, window. And the last thing I wanna show you is you can ask it questions about VS Code. So if you type in VS Code over here, you can ask questions like, how do I use the best VS Code extension out there, Peacock? I wonder who wrote that. Oh, Peacock's a VS Code extension that you can use to color your windows. So it's actually telling you all the commands that you can use. Uh, and then it actually gives you options up here, like, hey, Peacock changed to a favorite color. Let's do that, and now, I can change it to that color. That's pretty neat. So you can also ask questions like VS Code, how do I use Peacock, you gotta spell that word right, right? Uh, to disable red squiggly lines. Let's see if I can spell squiggly. Nope. Now it'll actually tell you, you can use a setting in Peacock, squiggly be gone. If you haven't tried this out, by the way, it actually makes all the errors in your application go away. It's far better. <laughs> than Copilot ever was. Oh, yes, well, someday the AI will be better. Anyway, just wanted to wrap up with telling you all this stuff is available to you. It's coming on preview. You can go to the website, sign up for it. You can also learn a lot more, but when you do learn about GitHub Copilot and the chat features, you're gonna be a more efficient developer. Everything you do is gonna be better, faster, and you're gonna have a lot of fun doing it. If you want to learn more about this, go ahead and snap this. You can go to the link at the bottom of the page. There's a couple of learning lessons for free up on the website. And you know what? Thanks you all for coming back in person. It's really nice to see all of you. Have a great vacation at EngineConf. <laughs>